Hey everyone, Jim Phoenix here, and in this episode of What's Cracking, we have Dominic Mann, and we're going to talk about small towns and the hauntings and horrors that can go on psychologically and paranormally. All this and more, and that's What's Cracking. Hit it. Hey everyone, Jim Phoenix here, and today we've got Dominique Mann. That's right. We're going to talk about small town, big town, all sorts of towns, and spooky stuff. I have to admit, I saw your stuff online, and it blows my mind away. Thank you. I want to oh, thank you for being talented. <laughs> that, 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 thank goes to you for that one. I love that you're digging into the smaller towns. What inspired you to go small? Sure. So I, I grew up in, in a small town and my sort of safe haven was a small town. So I grew up in New England um, in a small town in Massachusetts outside oh, wow. of Boston and an even smaller town my grandfather lived in in Connecticut. And Connecticut's very spooky. And so my grandfather would just get thrills from scaring me as a kid. And I wasn't scared. I was like, do it more. And, um, <laughs> and I think um, small towns, not only did they provide the inspiration for like the horror short stories I would write, but also it provides a level of intimacy, you know, to really understand humanity, especially like if you're consuming horror, for example, um, and you can really sh see the dynamics between different people because it's right. such a controlled space. And so that's why it's just nostalgia, what I grew up in, and it, it inspired me so much to just write and tell stories. That's a great idea, connecting those two. It's like the monster in the house to control space is a small town. Yes. And, and think about it, a lot of small towns are isolated, so they can't, like, I'm going to get out of here. Like, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> I love that premise of, like, you're, I know this sounds so dark, but uh, uh, that you're yeah. trapped, you can't get out, you know, of a small yeah. town, and there you can't leave. Like, that's why I'm into the show From on Amazon and MGM Plus right now, because it's, like, that exact premise of, like, a small town that you can't leave. It really? plays like so many horrors. Yeah, it's a really great show. Um, oh, I need to check that out. Yeah, and then at night, monsters come out, unless you have a talisman in your window, and they're monsters disguised as humans that smile at you and try to goad you into coming outside your house. Um, oh, wow, that's And creepy. then they maul you to death if um, if you let them in. Because once uh, you invite them in, all of them can come in. Stranger danger <laughs> all over again. It is, it is a small yeah. town yeah, fear of the and outsider. They, and they target people like, for example, kids. For If you have a kid, you have to board up your window because the kid is more susceptible be, to, to being deceived. So it'll be like this like old lady like who's obviously a monster, like yeah. knocking on the window, which of course is creepy in and of itself. But the, the kid doesn't know any better. So then the kid looks and it's like, and the old woman will be like, oh, it's Nana. Come out. It's Nana. And you know what happens after that. So it's like, it's just, ah, man, it's a good show. I, I love that concept of it. And when you said small town can't leave, I thought it meant all my friends from high school. Oh, I actually missed that layer too because <laughs> oh. good horror also touches on your uh, your deeper fears of like everyday life. We consume horror to face, right. to, to process the, the fears that we face in our everyday lives. And so I had that fear growing up, even though small town environments inspired me, I was like, I was so eager to leave my small town to experience the world because I didn't want to be trapped in it emotionally, yeah. e you know, even though my family's still there and I still love small town stuff. So it's not an aversion to it. It's just that I had this like I itch to experience the world and I didn't want to be limited by the the neighborhood and the block that I grew up on. Yeah, I, I think if anyone's from a small town, it's very identifiable. It's the yeah. you'll go back. You're not like ashamed, but yes. man. <laughs> yeah. You this, you want like a, something that's open past eight a.m. or eight a.m. eight p.m. like yeah, it's it's eight p.m. exactly like, kind of, like the store closed down like there's only one so and you have those friends you know. who did stay there and they're asking you the same questions they did ten years ago like you want to go to this this spot and get you know some Chinese yeah. food you know it's like I, <laughs> like I, that's a it's like a loop um, you want to cruise down in your car yeah, ex exactly exactly I'm like yeah. no I want to I want to evolve <laughs> as a human so. Appreciate oh, it, man. I, I, full disclosure, I remember when we had a McDonald's. That was big news. You have yes. McDonald's yes, now? Yes, yes, yes. That oh was a treat God. growing up for me. Like the toy, yeah. the toy and like, the, you know, like oh, everything. Yeah. <clears throat> that's the thing. It's, it's a treat. And that's exactly what it was back then, a treat. Now it's like the everyday occurrence and the small yeah. people <laughs> Yeah, exactly. 
sometimes keeps us grounded more. Now, I understand that small towns can be scary, and your grandfather tried to scare you. Yeah, so he would, um, even when I was like really young, like six years old, it just like grew up around that. So we would watch uh, the original Wizard of Oz. And right, oh. and then it would be dark in our like small one floor home yeah. that he built. So he knew all the nooks and crannies and where to hide. And so right when the part when either the witch or definitely the flying monkeys, he would sneak outside and then the TV was in front of a window and then he would start banging on the window. <laughs> and, then- <laughs> and we would, we would oh scream, God. you know, or he would get on all fours and like, you know, it's just like you would see, like, in The Grudge or The Ring. He would just get on all fours and chase. I know, a weird, like, it seems weird. Why would you do that to a little kid? But he knew I loved it, and I would just laugh. And I was like, when can I be scared next, right? Scared but the Wizard of Oz flying monkey scene, him banging on the window like that, that, that would always <laughs> do me in every time. Every time. It's For those who never watched the original Wizard of Oz, <laughs> it, back then, kids' movies were terrifying. Yes, they were. <laughs> Like Disney was not playing like, no, MGM, we're not, uh-uh. we want kids screaming. Yes, exactly. <laughs> forever scarred. And for him to do that, that's funny. Because I'm having flashbacks. I'm like, yeah, that'll scare me. Yeah, it, it that's is scary. Is, scary. It is scary enough but to have the boom, boom, boom. Uh, creepy, creepy, creepy. So that's where you got your love from horror from is your grandfather. Is I would say, yeah, my grandfather. And the fact that I, um, he encouraged me when I would write short stories about horror, like, I was creating characters with weird names like Addison Foster. I probably saw it in a show or something. And I was like 10 years old and I would just sit there and start writing and writing because it was so dark outside in this small Connecticut town. Right. We, our house was right in front of like a, his house in front of the, like the woods. Yeah. And so I would write. And then when every time I'd write, he'd be like, oh my gosh, you write so much. Oh, okay. And I'd be like, okay, so I like this feedback. So I'm going to keep doing it. And um, it kind of just grew from there. So I guess, yeah, now that I think about it, it would be my grandfather who inspired um, horror and the, and the layers of it that bring me so much joy and it's so much fun. That's an amazing thing. And we're just talking about this in theory before, where if you encourage a child's imagination, they yes. will spark it forever. As soon as you say, no, that's not how it goes, you kill that child's imagination forever. Exactly. Oh, that's a really great point. That's exactly yeah. what he did for me. It was imagining possibilities on our a small plot of land right and little things like if there was a hole in a rock which is like weird but normal at the same time i don't know and i would like look put my finger in the hole because i'm curious about it and yeah. then he would just like act like a snake was there was like <laughs> and then I, and I, would, I would freak out so like his small little house was just this like constant adventure and imagination you know even though when you look at it now it's like okay this is it's a very you know, tiny space, but it, it was, it was so much more to me. Magical. Did you ever hide underneath the table? Um, I'm no, the weirdo. I'm the weirdo. no okay. because I, because, because I, he would find me, it, you oh, know, unless, like ta- <clears throat> unless it was a tablecloth, you know what I'm saying? I, um, uh, and also I think I'm, I, I'd like having control in situations, even though you can't always. And so the idea of hiding under beds or under things where you can't see what's you know, like around you, like that would, right. you know, like that. I like to be able to see what the threat is. You know what I'm saying? Like, me too. <laughs> I never understood, like, hide under the bed. That's where the monster lives. What do you exactly. mean, hide under the bed? <laughs> I also watch, if you remember, I don't know if anyone remembers this uh, Disney Channel show that had no business being on Disney that don't look under the bed. And really? it was, it was, so it plays obviously Disney channels for kids. So it plays on kids worst nightmares and it's a boogeyman, but not like some cartoonish, like fun boogeyman. I mean like really, really, really? Like, deformed and like, like grotesque and it had these long fingernails and it would like its claws would just like Whoa. come up from underneath the bed. And they really were trying, it was like kid horror. And then I'm like, but I loved it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so to me though, that, that lesson learned, don't hide under the bed. Yeah. You know? yeah. Bad things happen there. If you can float above your bed and sleep, it'd be even better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Disney Channel, like, what, something like this way comes. Mm-hmm. Uh, although bread knobs, bread knobs, bed knobs and broomsticks. Bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah, I remember that. That, that was an amazing little psychedelic movie. I watched it again as a <laughs> like, I don't know that pickup as a kid. She's like, she's like, yeah, come on, kids. We're going to fly this bed over. To like Animal Kingdom Island and have everyone that we kind of already drew out for different stories in Disney appear in this movie. And then like the 
the psychedelic scene happens. Like, wow. Yeah. That that <laughs> that one. It's been a long time since I've seen that one, so I don't remember. I do remember being spooked by that. Yeah. Um, but even like the remember the Olsen twins. And they were like oh. big, but they had this movie that was Double Double Toil and Trouble, I think. Yes. And you would think it's like a cute, like cute little twins, Halloween. It was dark. I was scared of that movie. Yeah. I couldn't stop watching it, but I was scared. Like that old woman, Agatha, who I think her name was Agatha. I'm not even sure, but it was like she was a witch. And I just remember, I don't know, it's like that, like jump scares, everything. So it was not like a, <laughs> it was kid horror was a genre in the 90s, I feel. Right. I, I think we've gone away from that now. I'm looking at the, the, a lot of the kids stuff right yeah. now. It's like for kid kids. But you're right. The 90s, we grew up with Freddy Krueger, whose yes. mission in life was to kill little kids in their sleep. Exactly. And that was like targeted at like, oh, you're 12? Watch this. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'll never sleep again. Like, you will never sleep again. You're no, right. That's nope. Good, good rhyme. I and watched now, the yeah. – I'm so sorry. Go ahead. No. And now we're doing other things. What did you watch? What did you watch? The Sixth Sense at a fourth grade birthday party. <laughs> fourth grade? Yes. Fourth I don't know grade? what parent signed off on it. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh the idea that like only, was it the kid who, yeah, it was the kid who can't only see dead people and yes. you only see them when you're alone. That was nightmares for me. Oh, movies. that's going to be creepy. <laughs> It's like fourth grade. Yes, this Bruce Willis movie. That's yeah, exa fun. exactly. It's like, only, it's only when you're alone. You know, yeah. like that creeped me out so much. So now I have to ask, have you seen ghosts as a kid? So I, so I, I hesitate because I, I think I have, I have, but I'm sure. not sure. I, I think the, as I got older and the, you know, the rational quote, rational side, whatever you have redefined right. rational, was like, no, but I just had a very vivid, there was this, I thought it was a nightmare, like just a vivid nightmare yeah. of this like man wearing my dad's t-shirt. It was not my dad, <laughs> like Whoa. wearing this like purple t-shirt, just standing in the hallway. And I just remember like, I like looked up and then he looked at me and then I just like pretended I was asleep and I got so scared. And wow. I just, I remember that. And it's different because you think, okay, you were dreaming or nightmare, but right. I know I've had some very vivid nightmares where I can tell you the details. Right. This felt diff This felt like I was awake, you know? And um, so uh, still up for debate could have been just the most vivid nightmare I've ever had, or I don't know if it was ghosts of my father's past. I don't know. I don't know. I could really be. don't know. Could be. Yeah. Um, and then actually in adulthood, I had an, ex uh, an eerie experience that really? I got confirmation that they someone else in the hotel I was staying in experienced it too. But that's not when I was a kid. So do you <laughs> tell people about these things? I, I don't. I don't think – I think the kid one, I, I, don't, I didn't tell because, um, you know – I. I you know, if I maybe I told my mom at the time because right. I thought that you know she'd be like, oh, "Okay, you had a bad dream." But like later in life, I, I don't I don't think of an occasion where I volunteer it unless we have an explicit conversation. Like, you know, have you seen a ghost? And even then, that one when I was a kid, I don't mention. But I I share the one where more recently, where like I heard noises in a hotel and like a rocking chair above me, and really? go down the front desk the next next day and said no one was above the room above me that night and talk to other people in the hotel. Like, did you experience this too? And they're like, yeah, we heard some weird shit. Sorry. I don't know if you can swear on this. <laughs> oh, we just did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it just, I'm sorry. You can edit it out. Yeah. No, <laughs> Joe Bob Briggs took that away when he did the F bomb. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're all good okay. after this. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. earned the explicit label. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's amazing when you're staying at these hotels because you think about all the people who come through these places Yes, and some of them don't leave. <laughs> That's my, that's what, and the, what, what was eerie about it is that, so it was in Mississippi. Why I was in Mississippi, it was some kind I was, so my grandfather obviously was important to me right. and years after he passed away, I wanted to trace his roots in Mississippi because he was pushed up North because of the largest flood in American history, the 1927 oh, wow. flood. And he luckily escaped it's like the red cross evacuated him he was a sharecropper in mississippi but not everyone survived right. so it turns out the hotel i wanted to trace his roots go to the flood museum this tiny little shack of a museum and the ho only hotel that was available it was right where the levee broke um and they oh. would house people who were struggling some died um or who were like um needed medical attention in the levee building and the levee building 
became the hotel. So that's what made me think like, these are some restless spirits. Someone who did them wrong did not evacuate them. You know, there was a lot of injustice during the flood in terms of who got saved and who did not. But um, so it just, I, first I heard scratching on the walls. I'm like, okay, well, it's a storm. And of course it's like a flood worthy storm the night I get there. And I'm like, is it a rat? Like, it was just scratching but with, in the middle of the night. And I like, couldn't sleep. I was really upset at the people above me. Like I was like, who is rocking? There's no rocking chair. Rocking? And then a kid, I heard a kid running up and down. I assumed it was a kid. Cause who would yeah. be running up and back and forth. And I'm like, just so irresponsible. This is like, I can't sleep. And then I went to go complain and they said, ma'am, there's, there was no one above you that night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I was just, and so that, that made me think that's hard. I have to challenge like what I think is rational because I know what I, experience and right. that building has a history they didn't just like build a new like this that hotel was literally the levee building where people died or they were getting medical attention um because of the floods destruct uh destruction in 1927 yeah no i i hear those stories I'm like nope not staying there no it's the only hotel like yeah i don't know man i'm camping outside it's a big storm oh okay i guess i will you know yeah yeah even the pre- people at the front desk were like don't tell me this. I don't want to hear this. Like, yeah. and and it's right? like they accepted it. They weren't like, okay, she's a little off. <clears throat> they were like, uh, you know, this sounds like what I've been hearing. I don't want to hear it because I need a job and I need yeah. to work here. <laughs> I need to work here. It's at night. It's scary enough. I yeah, don't yeah. I don't want to hear confirmation of the fears that I already know exist. So, oh man, when you're you're going through this and your rational mind's like, no, it has to be. You know, when you hear the scratching of the door, you think, especially during a storm, it's got to be a rat or a exactly. field mouse trying I, to get in. Yeah, exactly. And then you don't see anything, and then you hear the stuff above you, and you get the confirmation there was nothing at all above you. Mm-hmm. Is that a, a place you want to go back to? Majority of me says no, but there is that small part of me that's like, I kind of do. I yeah. don't think I would stay there at night unless I was with, with company. Um, I don't know, because it's almost like this need for validation. Like, did I really experience that? But of course, I'm the person in all those horror movies that gets got, you know, that gets <laughs> take like dies because they're too curious. And I always judge yeah. those people like, what? why would you do that? Why would you go into the basement right now? And when it's dark, when you heard something and and I say that and I grew up in a family where we're like, oh, no. Like, I don't, I don't know if I believe in ghosts, but we will not entertain this just to find out. Um, <laughs> but there is, I would be lying if I said there wasn't a small part of me that does want to ex- explore and see out. and validate what I experienced or not. You got to find out. And those experiences make us. And I do believe what you're making now, is that based on an experience you've had? Yes. I mean, it's, it's based on a series of experiences I've had, particularly in, um, you know, small towns and the fact that I see connection between horror and our history, whether it's like right. literal history and like ghosts with unfinished business or like, um, you know, just shows like Sleepy Hollow where literally the ghost. Like Bob Crane. It, 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 the cartoon <laughs> version was scary. Yeah. I refuse to watch. I mean, I, maybe I will, <clears throat> but even the cartoon version was scary. And, yeah. um, and then the remake, I think it was for Fox. Like that was scary. Yes. And it's just, it's just like, it's just it, all the through line that people miss sometimes is that it is history, like haunted houses. It's a house with a history. Yeah. And so what I'm, I'm ex- currently exploring a project um, that I'm going to start as a short film and, and try to sort of get it around the story around a short format. But the longer format is basically like, Um, Because I have a background in um, politics and organizing and stuff, you know, I want to write what I know. And I think that increases my chances, too, of people taking the voice seriously. But the premise is that after a grassroots organizer disappears in a small Connecticut town, um, you know, you know, a diner host, a mental health advocate, land surveyor, um, an ex-White House aide search for answers. And the White House part, because it's like. I don't want to lean too much into government conspiracy things in this climate, but it's more of like um, anything that represents institutions. But of course, when they go to this small town, they find more than they imagined and they have to confront the town's mysterious customs. Think the lottery. If you all know that short story, fewer hours of sunlight each, each day, an eerie surrounding forest, 
a swaying presence in the trees, an abandoned school, schoolhouse at the edge of town, which I have experienced in Connecticut, a really eerie red schoolhouse that my grandfather would go to as a kid, but we would visit there um, when it was abandoned. I don't know why we did that <laughs> on our walk to visit an abandoned. Yeah, so what drives the story forward is like, what is this town's secret plot? What's their deal? Um, yeah. What are these horrors that are unfolding and they're in conflict with the town? And, and the characters, meanwhile, of course, I like good horror intersects with like what makes us human and what we're all seeking. And so the characters right. are seeking uh, um, belonging, you know, connectedness in a world that feels disconnected. Um, and I want to show that through a small town, you know, horror story. <laughs> I, I, I love that idea. I especially love a small town. I, 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 one of the things, if you are in a major big metropolis, if you're on LA, for example, yeah, if something bad happens, you've got neighbors. Exactly. All, someone's like, going to know about it. Yeah. Gonna know, almost immediately something bad is happening. It happens all the time. If you're in a small town, ain't no one finding out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're like, on your own. No street lights. Yeah. Right. You know. No street lights. Oh, no pavement for half the time. You're in the middle of a exactly. forest. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so it brings the element like where, where did you, where's your house? Well, it's a, it's a third tree on the left. <laughs> go there. Yeah. And you drive down another hour and a half, and that's where the driveway is going to start. However, <laughs> like, God. Yeah. And, like, Easy. buildings tend to be, like, because of infrastructure issues, probably uh, issues probably with the town. Like, buildings You're don't right. get, <clears throat> like, versus a city, like, unless the city's really struggling, if there's an empty storefront, someone's going to buy it up quickly. And if there's str- real estate agents are struggling to sell it, they're, you know, developers will bring down the price or whatever it is right small towns it's like it could go abandoned for a minute like for a while and so yeah. and so i often see like I, the ghosts of a diner from like decades ago that i'm like you, y'all didn't just tear it down like and it's just there maybe they're scared to tear it down i don't know but maybe. in small towns there's not as much investment in you know like the houses and the buildings to make them look like people live here and so that's eerie and yes you're i you feel isolated you're always an outsider to whatever is existing there. I don't know. It's like, it's, it's just, yes. it's just, yeah. If something happens, you know, it's like if a tree falls in a forest and no one's there to see it, did it happen? So it's the idea of something happening and no one knows about it. Like that's, <laughs> you, know. you hit it on the head. You're always an outsider. If you are not 12th generation in that small town, exactly. You are an outsider. Yep. You're no longer trusted. And then you're being attacked on two fronts from the inside and the outside as well. And, it's trying to bring that rational world to a small town thing where things could be completely insidious happening. Exactly. And they live in an echo chamber of like, how often Whoa. are they leaving that small town? You know what I'm saying? To go, like, do they know the world has changed? Do they think certain things are normal? Like they were, you know, and, you know, that's why I believe that short story about the lottery spoiler and feel free to edit this out. If people want to go read it. Um, they, they, this idyllic town turns out that their sort of um, lottery is not what you think it is. The lottery is they stone people to death. Um, and if you, get picked, wow. yeah, if you win, you, yeah, you get stoned to death yeah. in front of the, the whole town. Island. And I, I, even though it seems outlandish given human history, right. But also the fact that if you're in a small town, if that was the norm for like centuries ago or whatever, or even sooner, yeah. If you don't have anything gut checking you to be like, okay, this, this is pretty bad actually, then like that's just normal for you. And so to me, I'm very curious about what are those tus- customs in the town that get normalized, haven't changed over the years, you Absolutely. know, and just ex- exist in this echo chamber of that town. Yeah. And the echo chamber part is correct. When anyone leaves a small town, I, I, I went to Vegas, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, and I was like, wow, all those things I thought growing up, completely wrong <laughs> you know completely wrong there's yeah. like you you find a whole new world out there exactly. and if you stay in that small town you go back if you go back talking to your friends you almost have to talk to as a different dialect yep and, and the words themselves like you know it, it's weird learning up and I, so i can see the connection with the small town it does make a great story background especially if you have people that small towners will not trust the government yep will not trust that person they will not trust the authorities, right? Because they yep. are in their, in their, like you said, echo chamber. Chamber, I like to say, like the, in a little bubble. So, without giving anything away for for your story, when you're going through the human aspects of it, does it necessarily have to be mystical evil 
or is it also also a small town mentality that could work against you know the, the secrets <laughs> yeah of i i want to intentionally through my story i think good horror or at least the direction we should move horror in as a genre is to interrogate what is actually the real horrors yeah. right and so i want in through my story you're gonna even though the the horrors in the forest are scary and eerie it almost you'll get sort of distracted by that but then slowly but surely the town is is becoming more weird to you than you thought and and so then it sneaks up on you and then you kind of realize but well, maybe the town is actually more horrifying than what's out there right and um and so I, I, I think that's something that I really wanted to play with in, the, in, in my story is this idea in, like interrogating what is the real horrors and the interplay between the things that the townspeople just, you know, decide to do and normalize with, in conflict with the, 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 the forest. And who knows? I'm not saying this will happen, but maybe the forest exists because the town did something pretty bad. You know, um, yeah. and there's a consequence that they have to face and the town doesn't. So they try to suppress the forest. Doesn't mean this forest isn't scary, but you got to look at its root causes for the why it was it exists the way it does. I, I love that idea because we always see things like the American Jeremiah and everyone, you know, go west, young man, you know, and yeah. go on populace. And that was pushing some ideologies through the United States when it was a lot of like the, the forests are brand new. These are yep. undiscovered, yet someone's already living here. <clears throat> Country, you know, I was like, hey, wait a minute. Uh, we won't count that. But when they started to try to take over those lands, the land sometimes pushes back. Mm, we hear I love where, that. where yeah. the expeditions just go missing. And we don't know if something personal will happen to them or is just the land saying, we've had enough. Yep. You know, and, and you, you kind of grow up. <laughs> in those things now if you could give the young version of you who's writing that very first short story advice what would you give the advice what advice would you give oh i love this question um i, I don't want to sound cliche with this but yeah. don't give up imagining or creating um yeah, don't give up your imagination and sense of wonder and curiosity about the world because we as we get older and there are certain norms that get imposed on us, whether healthy or unhealthy, many unhealthy in today's society, especially oh, yeah. in the age of social media and, and, <clears throat> and such, um, that I think it stifles our sense of creativity and imagination, like what if? And um, I would tell her, even though she or this young version of me already has that imagination, that young me was also dealing with stuff in school, like bullying and other things. And I would tell her that, well, I mean, it gets better. That's number one. Um, and to continue to create these worlds that are fun, imaginative, and yes, scary, because maybe you'll create a sense of belonging for other people and then you'll have it for yourself. I would translate it differently for a young version of me because I don't think she right. would understand what I just said. But right. but essentially just I would say keep keep dreaming, keep imagining. You know, you you know people people want to join the world you're building, you know, because That's it. doing so you're creating belonging for other people. Yep. I I agree 100%. That is the <laughs> magic of it keeping your imagination and keeping the wonder of the world still alive, especially yes. in today's age of cynicism of er, to, everything's quick. You know, I, I think building that world for other people to enjoy because yep. they need it. They need this world to be built. And I, that's perfect advice to younger you. And look yeah. at this. I have to say this has been fun. It's I when I see small town, I'm like, yes, I can talk about. I've had so much stuff. fun. You know, I can't have this conversation all the time about small towns with people. So like, I was so th thrilled when you got back to me about this. I was like, oh my gosh, I yes, finally, I can really like dig deep into the small town, the layers of why they're so fascinating and why there's a reason why they're so popular across genres. You know, mystery right. and cr true crime and. Yeah. Um, just just magical realism and sci-fi fantasy. Small towns are always it for a reason. They are because this is where this is where the invasion <laughs> happens. Small yep. town USA. Yep. You know, it could be ghosts, it could be aliens, but this is we're we're coming here first. And growing up in a small town, we've all had stories. We've, yes, we've, we we've all, all we've all, all done. Even the most quote rational person. 
my right. uncle included. He's had some eerie experiences in that Connecticut town that he grew up in. I mean, Connecticut and Connecticut house, the same house. Right. Um, so it's, it's a real thing. Yeah, absolutely. And keep believing, keep reading. And I look forward. I want to see this when you get it all spiffy and you get it all on screen. Let me know. I, I want to review. I want to enjoy your version of the small town. I do. Oh, thank you so much. That makes, feels, makes me feel so good. And I hope that for you and for, for your listeners too, it, it makes, it creates the escapism um, that is, you know, escapism has this bad name to it. Like you think it's like you're not in reality. No, escapism no. makes you bring out the best parts of yourself and, and to have a safe space to, ima- you know, imagine, dream, be right. creative, be scared and feel the full range of your emotions. So I hope to create that. And I will most certainly keep you updated on that. And, Please do. Um, yeah. Thank you for hosting me today. Oh, um, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. And because where I am is going to be Thanksgiving I think tomorrow, I guess. Yes. Okay. For me to early Thanksgiving for you, I guess. And uh, yes, that's how time works. Thank you again, Dominique, man. Where can we find you on social media? Speaking of the evil. I'm primarily on Instagram. So Dominique J man, D O M I N I Q U E J M A N N. I say that because people spell Dominique differently. Um, So yeah, Dominique J man, that's just it. I love it. And Instagram is the perfect, especially for horror. Oh Small yes. Oh heart. yes. Oh. Halloween. I'm going to be, my Instagram is just going to be of like grotesque images. So beware. <laughs> beware. I'm going to be there. That, I'm there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's why I love it. Well, thanks again, Dominique. It's been lovely. And for everyone at home, good day. Oh, that's Paul Harvey. That is small town then. Ooh, Paul Harvey. <laughs> Bye everyone.